Welcome, listeners. I am in my studio today, and I'm going to be speaking about stories that come to my mind from this past week. Of course, my dog will be joining us. He won't bother us. He doesn't make very much noise, and I enjoy his company. So, I noticed a trend, a very good theme, especially in life. This motif about gratitude and appreciation for the world giving you challenges to grow. And what I mean by that, I'll use a story as an anecdote. I remember I used to read a book called The Alchemist, and you think that this book would revolve around it being about a journey with a boy named Santiago, who, like us, grows and learns and goes through relationships and finds the meaning of it all at the very end when every obstacle that he's ever faced was happening for him and there's no going around any of it because each challenge is given to us so that we're ready to take on the next. It's a never-ending process of learning and being able to grow to a better version of yourself. I highly recommend the book. The show I'm watching right now, I'm on season three of a TV show called Ozark. And Ozark is about a family that has to work really hard to survive laundering money for a drug cartel. But despite that sounding extremely awful, it shows the humility in this family and how they work together. And it remedies a lot of their relationship with that have already been damaged because the lack of gratitude. But particularly, I wanted to focus on the sixth episode of season three. Uh, In season three, it's an episode where there's this young lady that they hired who has to pick up shipments for her boss but is working with another group of mobsters who work for another boss. They made this deal about a casino and they, it's all business basically, but the rival gang doesn't get along with her and they would uh, mess with her, they would uh, drive away and make her come to pick up the shipment rather than making it convenient for her. So, on this particular episode, they uh, do something foolish where they um, try to upset her. And she's about to get furious, but as the, uh, the shipment is about to... You would think that, actually, she would walk up to the shipment, but another gang because the gang that the um, family works for is in a war with the other gang so this rival gang actually drops in and ambushes the uh, truck shipment and they gun down all of the mobsters and she was really lucky not to be in that particular spot at that time because then she would have been one of the gunned victims so by just plain chance it all worked in her favor and she got to live so that is one case that I thought was extremely interesting 
But another case in that same episode, um, Marty Bird, who's the main character, he gets kidnapped and he's actually tortured. And when you think there's no hope for his survival, the FBI, the lady that went in and froze his accounts, actually saved his life because it showed that he was still useful to the um, mob boss and he was only he was able to unfreeze it in front of him and it basically made it that the mob boss had no choice but to keep him and it was a huge surprise to his wife as well as um, the lawyer that works for the mob or cartel that is another case where some people may even call it divine providence or divine intervention. You see that in films like Pulp Fiction when uh, Samuel Jackson's character Jules uh, was supposed to die. He actually gets in the middle of a gunfight and all of the bullets uh, fly right past him. And Since that moment, it's a sign I think they call it Deus Ex Machina as well. It shifts his perspective and makes him live his life from then on. Particularly in my life, I can say the same thing that uh, I've witnessed. A sort of powerful moment, you can call it, where it changed my outlook on life and that's why I always feel gratitude for when I have the hard times and it puts everything into perspective that you can continue to grow and build on top of where you left off. Uh, you never really lose your experience. Your experience is like in any video game. There's role-playing games where you accumulate experience and you level up. In life we level up the more we allow information to make us wiser. And you don't have to be smart to learn your lesson. You just have to stop repeating the same mistake. A lot of games, they repeat themselves and it's the same exact game, nothing's changed, but your outlook and perspective on how you deal with these situations and problems have improved, or you've figured out your version of a solution to overcome uh, any adversity that uh, you may face. People have to adapt because adversities come in the form of other people creating these problems for you and depending on how they react you can counter find ways to move with the flow and not attack straight on it's like moving with the wave if you're a surfer it's like what Bruce Lee said being water adapting going with the direction of where the force appears and using it to your advantage. In judo, they use it in throws, the direction that they try to assert themselves. You gladly invite them to that direction and use it against them. In uh, jujitsu, you sort of have these counter-attacks, especially with how people attack with a leg-locking system. You never can be really counted out because there's counters to the counters. And in life, everything is constantly changing. And those who are aware and able to identify any of the threats they'll be good. It won't come to a surprise and 
it'll just be considered good work. In my job, I have to go through looking at images and these images, I have to perceive them in the way that I've been trained. And for me, it matters a lot because a lot of lives are within my duty to pay attention and stay focused. There's a story that I heard from a good friend of mine at work that really inspired me to do this uh, sort of discussion. And uh, I'll share that story with you right now because I really enjoyed it. So there's a king and this king had an advisor who he really looked up to. This advisor was really into the divine providence and divine intervention with how the world works in our favor to share a lesson with us that we haven't fully understood. So this king takes his favorite advisor and they go hunting. The king, he loves hunting for sport and uh, sharing all of these uh, techniques he's learned to efficiently um, wrangle and take out these creatures. The advisor was not skilled and was just beginning to learn how to properly uh, shoot a weapon. And the advisor, as he was trying to figure out how to use the uh, gun tool properly, it misfired and actually shot towards the king. And the king was hit on the hand, which ended up uh, making him lose a finger. The king was so devastated and uh, furious of what happened, even though it was his favorite advisor. He locked him up and uh, didn't even give him a chance to apologize, I suppose. So this king, as he locked down the um, advisor, days passed, his hand recovered, and he decides to go hunting again, but this time in an area where the king was actually advised not to enter, but because he wanted to see what this area looked like, and he was adventurous, he ignored a lot of the warnings, and when he went to the forbidden area, he encountered cannibals who, when he was ambushed by these cannibals, they killed the team that were with him while they were all um, imprisoned. But after they had wiped out uh, his bodyguards and people that were with him, they looked at him and they noticed that his hand was missing a finger. And with these cannibals, they are very superstitious. They have their own religion and beliefs. And in their belief system, it's shown as an omen. A missing finger shouldn't be messed with. And so they actually set the king free and he avoided being eaten like the rest of the people that were with him. So he ran back to his kingdom in joy and immediately set the advisor free. And he apologized to the advisor and he said, you were right, there are things that happen that we don't understand, but it happens for the best. And the advisor forgave the king 
The king had asked, though, if things happen for the best, what was the reason that was positive for being locked up in the cell for days? And the advisor had said to him, if I were with you on that expedition, exploring the unknown area, I would have been eaten. And so there you have it. Things happen for you, not to you. You have to believe and have faith that the hard times, as well as the good times, happen for the best. And life, in all its glory, is a gift that we should really appreciate and have gratitude while we still have it because this life is not permanent and what you take out of it will be something that next generations will continue to learn from and we build off of each other but remember wisdom is never free because you have to pay attention to when people share their stories with you That just makes me really want to help people realize that because we're living in a time where there's a lot of chaos and within this chaos we need people who stay composed and calm and they come up with proactive solutions to help their community to also be calm and work together during one of the most divisive times that has ever happened in this modern day American living. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. And if you took anything valuable out of this lesson that I just came out just out of whim that makes me happy and I wish you a very very very